welcome back to the course mechanics of solids. So, basically we are discussing about in the last lecture we are discussing about one numerical problem and that problem was like this right where A E B member was a stiff member that is a rigid member we are not considering any deformation there and that member is connected by three steel rods that is D B D and B C. So, in the last lecture we found out the member forces, forces in all members right B C, B D and D E and we found that B, C, B D is not carrying any load. So, therefore, B D must be equal to B prime D and at the same time B E must be equal to B prime E prime because that member itself is a stiff member we are not having any deformation there and A E is equal to A prime E prime and based on that we found out the horizontal movement of point A, which was basically our one of the objectives right for this problem. So, horizontal displacement of point A was found as 0 0.024 inch if you recall. Okay. So, now today basically we are going to find out the vertical movement of point A that is nothing but delta A V. So, delta A H already has been obtained. Now, let us see how we can find out delta A V. So, let me draw it very simple line diagram. This is your A So, this is your delta A V correct. Okay. Now, this is this point was E prime. So, this point was A prime and this point was B prime. So, if you just take out this configuration and if you blow it up, so it will look like this okay. and this E double prime is the point where if you draw a normal from point E to the line A B, so that will be intersecting at E double prime. Similarly, if you draw a normal from point B prime to member A B that is intersecting at B double prime and this is nothing but your delta B V by definition. Okay. This angle is say theta, this angle is also theta and this is nothing but the vertical movement of point E that is delta E V. I hope you have understood because this problem, the conceptualizing this problem is difficult. Once you conceptualize this problem, then rest of the things is pretty simple. Okay. The calculation is pretty simple. Only thing is that you have to you have to find out or you have to determine how it will deform. Okay? Fine. So, now this point I am saying as point O. Okay? So, what I can write if I consider O E double prime is say A fit. Okay? Therefore, O B double prime O E double prime if I say A fit then O B double prime should be 6 minus A fit because the total length B E or B double prime E prime both are equal both I mean are equal and they are nothing but 6 feet. Okay. So, now if you look at this geometry I can simply write just 
say what am I writing tan theta is equal to E prime E double prime by O E double prime. Can I write that? Very much so. Okay. So, this is nothing but delta E V E prime E double prime is nothing but delta E V as shown in the figure and O E double prime is nothing but your A into 12 that is nothing but your in inch actually. Okay. So, A feet basically. So, O E double prime is nothing but a feet. Okay. So, I am multiplying 12 because I want to convert that thing in inch. Okay, fine. So, similarly tan theta can be written as if you look at the figure tan theta can be written as delta B V plus delta E V divided by the total length 6 feet. Okay. So, if you consider one triangle like this, so delta B V plus delta E V divided by 6 feet. So, which can be written as delta B V plus delta E V into 6 into 12, that is in inch, I am expressing everything in inch. Okay. So, from this you know delta B V right, you know delta E V right. In the last lecture we calculated that delta B V and delta E V both we have calculated in the last lecture when we are talking about uh, or when we started this problem. Okay. So, from there if you put the value, so delta B V we obtained as 0 0.024 and delta E V we obtained as 0 0.018 divided by 72 that gives me tan theta. Okay. So, I can write here that gives me tan theta. Okay. Now, from the geometry from the geometry okay what we can say that delta ab if you look at this delta ab plus delta bb by 18 feet 18 into 12 that is inch so what i am doing i am considering a big triangle Okay, something like this, a big triangle I am considering, just simple geometry class 8 standard geometry or 7 standard. Okay. So, that is nothing but your tan theta. Okay. So, you know delta B V, you know tan theta from there. So, you can find out delta A V which is equal to 0 0.102 inch. Okay. I hope you have understood this. So, delta A V is equal to 0 0.102 inch and in the previous lecture we found delta A H. So, our objective is fulfilled. So, we have got the deformation or the movement of point A in the vertical as well as horizontal direction. Okay. So, this is all about your second chapter. Now, we will be moving to the next chapter that is concept of stress and strain. Okay. So, now you should know what is stress. First, we will talk about stress and then we will go to the strain part. Well, so now we will start the new chapter that is concept of stress at a point 
plane stress case, transformations of stresses at a point, principal stresses and Mohr circle. Okay. So, first we should know what is stress, okay. how, de how to define stress. Now, if you look at a body, any, any body okay, under the action of several external forces like here whatever is shown F 1, F 2, F 3, F 4 and so on up to F n. So, there are n number of forces acting on this body. Now, we are considering one plane, we are, we are cutting this body uh, in such a way that we can get this is the plane. So, this is the plane. Okay. This plane is containing one point say point O. Okay. And now, after cutting this body on this plane, we are getting this plane like this. Okay. So, now this plane is discretized with very small segments in number of segments or infinite number of segments. And we are considering one plane which is containing point O and that plane is defined by the direction normal n. Okay? And you know from your uh, knowledge of physics that any plane can be defined by its direction normal. Okay? So, this plane, this small segment can be defined by this direction normal and this on this small segment some delta f that force is acting. So, now how this force has been developed. So, when you are applying some externally applied force right every system will be generating some internal internal forces okay? it, it will be developing some internal forces which will resist this external force. So, these are the external forces right these are the external forces. Now, due to the application of these external forces, when you are cutting the body with this plane okay, and on this plane, if you consider different or infinite number of segments, small, small segments and all those segments, some internal forces will be acting and these internal forces will try to balance the external forces. right? So, one such force, one such internal force is say delta f, which is acting on a small segment which is containing point O and this small segment is defined by the direction normal n. I hope you have understood this. Okay. So, if that is there, then I can define the stress vector T n, I can define the stress vector T n like this. So, T n can be given by limit delta a tends to 0 delta f that is the force over this area. That is the limiting condition, that is the limiting condition of the force. Now, what is delta A? Delta A is the area, cross sectional area of this small segment which is containing point O. So, on that small segment, okay, on that small segment, this is a small segment whose area is a delta A. On that small segment, your delta F is acting, right the limiting condition when delta a tends to 0, try to understand when delta a tends to 0 that means, when delta a will tend, will tend to 0 basically that will be becoming a point kind of thing. So, when delta a tends to 0 then the limiting condition of the force is known as stress. Okay. So, now few things you need to remember. So, T n is a vector as I told you earlier and that it acts on a plane P 
passing through the point O whose normal is n direction normal okay and the stress vector does not act in general okay in the direction of n it is not necessary for the t n is acting along the direction of n. So, n is the direction normal. So, that means any plane say suppose this is my plane okay? this is my this is the plane how to define this plane you draw a normal direction normal from that plane and by that normal this plane will be defined. So, if the direction normal is n so I can call that plane as n plane right. Okay. So, what does it say? So, T n is a vector which is quite obvious and that it acts on a plane passing through the point O as I showed you whose normal is n that also I have shown you right in the figure if you come back to this figure. So, this is the direction normal. So, this is the point O this is the direction normal n okay? and T n does not T n. So, delta f if you see delta f it is not necessary that delta f will be always acting along the n direction or the direction normal right. So, f could be any any direction it is not necessary in generally it is not acting along the n direction okay, along the direction normal fine. So, now what I can write then then the stress vector in terms of its components that is x y z if you if you have the mutually perpendicular axis coordinate system then in terms of components what I can write the stress vector is equal to T x that is the x component okay, multiplied by the unit vector along x direction. Similarly, T n y unit vector along y direction plus T n z uh, into unit vector along z direction. So, where T x, T y, T z they are the x component, y component and z component of the stress vector T n that I can have because I have any stress vector that I can decompose or the resolve in three mutually perpendicular coordinate system okay, x, y, z. So, they can be written like that. So, now we should understand now one thing is very clear from this discussion that we should know the plane. Without knowing the plane you cannot define the stress. So, when you are going to define the stress basically you need to define the plane also on which the stress is acting. So, the definition of plane is very very important right. So, now let us talk about that. Now, we will define the positive and negative faces, positive and negative faces. Okay. So, now if you come back to this figure, so they are x, y, z coordinate system and we have drawn one parallelopiped. Okay in this x y z coordinate system and this is the parallel. Now, we are going to define a phase which is positive. So, if I define a phase which is positive that means, the phase is positive when its outward directed normal is normal vector is towards the positive coordinate direction. right? So, what does it mean? So, let us let us write down that statement and then we will we'll basically explain a phase because you need to define a plane before understanding the stress. Okay. 
So, f s will be positive when it is outward directed normal vector points points in the direction of the positive coordinate axis. So, what is the definition? The definition says a face will be defined as positive when its outward directed normal vector points in the direction of the positive coordinate axis. Now, if you look at this figure, so if I consider 1, 2, 3, 4 plane or 1, 2, 3, 4 face, this is the this is my face 1, 2, 3, 4 face. Okay. So, this face will be defined as positive as per the definition because the outward directed normal vector of this phase is towards the direction of positive coordinate axis that is nothing but positive x axis. Similarly, 5, 6, 7, 8, if you consider this phase, this is the phase, what should I say? This phase should be positive or negative? This phase will be negative because the outward directed normal vector from this phase is towards the negative direction of coordinate axis that is negative x direction. So, that phase will be defined as negative phase. Similarly, you will be having 3 positive phases and 3 negative phases. So, this is my positive phase, this is my positive y phase, this is my positive x phase, this is my positive z phase, positive z phase. Whereas, this will be my negative x phase, this will be my negative y phase and this back side phase will be my negative z phase. Okay? I hope you have understood that. So, a phase will be defined as positive when its outward directed normal vector points in the direction of the positive coordinate axis. Similarly, a phase will be defined as negative when its outward directed normal vectors points in the direction of the negative coordinate axis. So, then that that phase will be defined as negative. Okay? I hope you have understood. Well, so I will stop here today. So, in the next class we will continue with the further discussion on concept of stress. Thank you very much.